Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Thank and praise God for another day. Uh, thank and praise God for this opportunity once again to come before you and share. Um, I was just thinking this week, you know, this we're in a time that's so crucial and it's so easy to take things for granted and to uh, not see things the way we should. Uh, being succumb to life issues and day-to-day -day mundane things and this and that and we could be so overwhelmed till we'll forget that we're just pilgrims in this land we forget that we'll forget that and I had a uh, a moment this week uh, a couple days ago but let's open with a word of prayer and then we'll uh, share you share with you what I'm talking about Lord, it kind of impressed upon me just a couple of days ago. In fact, it was Sunday evening. Um, but let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank and praise God for saving us, Lord. We thank you for filling us with your spirit. We thank and praise you for giving us a desire to want to walk upright before you. Giving us a desire to want to be led by your spirit. Father God, we pray, Lord God, those under the sound of my voice, that you touch their lives, Lord. Touch the lives of those that uh, made contact, Lord God. Those that are sincere. They're like-minded people coming together, Lord God, to, to, to share the truth of your word. We ask you to help us, keep us. Bless those that are sick and afflicted in our midst. Lord, you said by your stripes we're healed. Lord, we thank and praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your great mercy. We thank you for your sovereign power, Lord God. We thank you for bringing us out of darkness into light. We thank you, Lord God for giving us the boldness and the tenacity to stand for truth and love. Lord, we ask that you have your way in our hearts and our minds. Bless us, Lord God, that we'll take nothing for granted, but acknowledge you in all our ways, and you will direct our path, Lord. We thank you right now, and we ask that you have your way in the midst. Bless us to step out the compassion of ourselves, and let your spirit take complete control. In Jesus' name, amen. I was just saying earlier how earlier today, well, early this week was, in fact, Sunday evening. I was um, over a friend of mine's, and um, I was doing something, and it dawned on me that um, it dawned on me that um, only what you do for Christ is going to last. All of the stuff that we come in contact with, all of the things that we deal with from day to day, all these things are temporal. And you know what? It don't, you're not going to take a grain of sand with you. But we can live a life with Christ that will be reflective of our coming to him or preparing uh, to meet him. And those things that will be transferred over, all this other stuff, it, it means nothing. It means nothing. You know, we are so inundated with things and stuff, and people want... Uh, nice things and which is okay but when that become the focal point of your life and we think that that's all that God want for us in fact we base our uh, the totality of our relationship with him on the things that we possess the things that we have but the most in the important thing of our relationship with him is that we're possessed by him that 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 he is the center of our life that he is the reason why um, th th those are the things that that should be more meaningful to us. Yeah, he a blessing. He said it. He said that if we delight ourselves, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And he said these things. He'll add unto. He'll give you those things. But our desire should want to be with Him. Our desire should want to be to serve Him. You know. Um, I think that you know sometimes we can be so inundated with with things that we we need to take heed. We need to be careful. That we don't allow ourselves to succumb to the to the ideology, to the thinking of this world. Because they base everything on what you possess, what you tangibly possess. You know, you want to have the biggest car. You want to have the biggest home. The biggest bank account. You want to have the best clothes. You want to have everything. And you, and then we talk that we say, well, God has blessed me. But then where, where dwell the love of God? What about those who are less fortunate? That doesn't mean you don't have to have nice things, but somewhere in that thinking, 
it should be a place for them too because God is mindful of them you know when you look at the uh, when you look at the tithing system when it's in its inception it was it was it was like a welfare system and it, it was for those that was less not just for the Levitical not for just the priesthood but 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 it was for the orphans widows and strangers those who had need this was so God had made provision for them and now we live in a day and time where a lot of times all that's being conjured up all that's come together and collected in tithes and offering is primarily after they pay for what to maintain the building to keep you coming back and all the things that are attached to that then the rest of it is, is pretty much directed to the leaders and and you can't substantiate that in this bible you can't and we have to take heed we have to be careful you, you know there's one scripture i'm gonna talk about and i'm not gonna be long because today i'm i am tired but i just wanted to share just this one scripture it's found in luke 12 and it's verse 15 uh that was the, the head heading i had wrote take heed to yourself um and it reads this this is jesus um uh, a, a situation um, about um, people is uh, wanted to divide the wealth of the brothers. Uh, it's, you know, it's, this was the question that was asked, and then Jesus responds. Well, let's read thirteen. He says, "It says, and one of the company said unto him, Master, speak unto my brother that he divide the inheritance with me." And he said unto him, Man. Who made me a judge or divider over you? Ask the question. Then he also said, he said, and he said unto them, he said unto them. Now he answered the young the man's question. Now he's making a statement to everybody that's in the listening of what he's coming out of his mouth. And this is what he says. He said, take heed and beware of covetedness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Now that key word is covetous. You're going to find here that covetous uh, is forbidding, forbidden. Now the thing is that you also find that uh, this is one of the criteria for a good leader uh, is that that they uh, are hatred of covetous, that they 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 disdain it. Um, a person that wants everything and all the things that something's wrong and you have to pay attention to what people are saying because they're telling you what's in their heart but here Jesus clearly points out that we ought not to think like that we ought not to be so overwhelmingly consumed with the things just the things that we have we should not be overwhelmingly consumed with just the things that we come in that uh, we strive to get uh, as far as uh, excelling in life uh, from a physical perspective or status wise but the most important thing that we're going to do on this planet is to establish a foundational relationship with Christ that we're going to exemplify the attributes of God his son, uh, the God uh, through his the mimicking his son in our lifestyle so we're gonna we're gonna be a mirror of Christ. Is basically what I'm trying to say. That we're gonna mirror Christ um, in our life. That we're gonna be a reflection, a reflection of that image of Christ. Not not just uh, in, in our verbiage, but in every aspect of our life and our thinking. That we, we we begin to process things the way God will have us to process because we're allowing ourselves to be led by His Spirit. These are the things that are going to be defining. These are the fruits that we need to look for. Um, people, everybody today is a, a believer. Everybody today said that, you know, hey, I, I'm a believer. Um, they said they're Christian. But they feel that they can come to God on their own terms. That God understand them. But the thing is, is that we have to understand God. You show me where a king said that, he he understand you and that you don't have to do nothing but just uh he understand you so you could just carry on doing things the way you've been doing them and he understands so he's gonna allow that to persist repentance means that we're turning away from our ideology realizing that we need god 
So that's the thing. We're turning away from the thinking of the world and we're turning to God. So that's a form of repentance is something. That's the first initial step in the us coming to God. Um, we could People could say that, okay, you say the Lord prayer, but if you haven't repented, you haven't done anything because you just went through a formality. God is looking for a transformation of the heart. So this, unless that takes place, then we haven't done anything. And it's, it's important for us to understand that that we. It's important for us to understand that we need to allow God to have His way in our hearts and our mind. We live in a day and time that everything uh, that's being said is being said in a way to be appeasing and entertaining. And and it, listen. We have to be exemplary of the life that we're talking about. We have to show the fruit of it. We just can't talk about this thing. We just can't um, uh, 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 say the right things in the right crowd or, or have that, that, that right now saying. But we have to be demonstrators of this. We have to be demonstrators of this lifestyle. God is looking for us to be transformed, our mind to be renewed by his word through his spirit our mind to be renewed that let this mind which was in Christ Jesus be in you we have to think like he thought I think I should say we have to think the way he thinks so that we can get the results that he had desired or predestined for us to have in order for us to be able to maximize the potential that with that is within us we have to do it the way that he prescribed in order to get the results that he has said we that he said in his word that we get, we have to do the things the way he said do them. You know, and, and it's important for us to understand that in order for us to be all that he wants us to be, we have to surrender all to him. And if we have not done that, then we're living beneath our privilege. And it's, it's high time for us to submit ourselves, the whole of ourselves, to him so that he can renew us and transform us and that we could be all that he has purposed us to be in him. And I'm asking that, you know, um, as we, 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 we go forth that, uh, excuse me, that uh, the Lord bless. I, I, I'm Today I am truly tired, so I'm not going to be long at all because I'm my, um, uh, I can't really even gather my thoughts. I'm so, just a little tired. Uh, I had to do some things today. Um, so my my admonishment, encouragement today is that we allow God to use us. So we take heed to ourselves, that we examine ourselves, that we judge ourselves. If we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. If we we examine ourselves and see whether we uh, find ourselves abiding in the will of God or not, this is important. God wants to bless us. And he wants us to walk in accordance to his word. He wants us to abide in a call with what he's called us so that we don't find ourselves outside of his will thinking that we're in his will. Because you can be so caught up in the, the church setting, uh, religious setting, and you think everything that you're doing is for God. And it's not. You know, you're just going through formality. Because it's okay to be a good usher. It's okay to be a good deacon. It's okay to be a good minister or an elder or um, a mother, if you will, or whatever other title there is, a trustee, um, a pastor. That's, that's But the most important thing, are we a good son? Are we living um, and abiding in the call where he called us? Because if we do that first and then we allow his love to, 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 to begin... To, to come forth out of us in the various areas of our life, then we'll be those the good in those areas that he would have us to be because we're coming into it with the right mindset. You know, because we can get so caught up into routine and the mundaneness of things that think that, well, God is, he is a God of order, but we supposed to do stuff in love. And if it's not in love, we haven't done anything. If it's not, if, if love is not the motivating factor, not just loving to do what we're doing, because you can have a love for something and not have a love for the people of God. 
But he said that we need to love one another as he loved us. So this love that he has put inside of us need to be shared abroad in our hearts, one toward another, in every aspect of our life. So if we're ministering and, or just being the brother that he has called us to be or being a sister that he's called us to be in this dark time, we need to be advocates for right on every spectrum. You know, we talk about things that, that are not right, and we should, as we should. But we need to be across the spectrum. You know, a lot of talk is about um, homosexuality because of its prevalency in this day and time. And we should talk about it and how it has no place in the setting of God. But there's other things that are just as, as, as heinous. We need to talk about uh, people that have uh, that are in leadership positions and, and taking advantage of God people. We need to talk about people that that's unjustly uh, 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 doing things to their brothers and sisters, and they do it, quote unquote, in the name of God. We need to talk about any form of unrighteousness. So that we, we, because we're supposed to be advocates for truth. We're supposed to be advocates for righteousness. So we're not just going to focus on one thing, but we're going to focus on everything. Just like I was sharing with somebody a couple of days ago about how when things happen in the church setting, uh, for example, if, 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 if it's something happened between a man and a woman, how the woman is ostracized and you hear very little about the man. But it, it wasn't her that had committed. And a lot of times, you have, I've heard it. Other sisters are saying, well, she she was uh, wearing her clothes a certain kind of way and tempting that brother and so forth. But they never accused the men. Listen, we have to judge righteous judgment. We have to do what's right in the sight of God. We can't just, because you're a leader, that you get a, 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 a get out of jail free card and then some other person come along and y'all want to, everybody want to jump on their head. We have to be advocates for what's right. And when those people, whomever they are, in whatever situation, when they come to repentance and everything has been dealt with properly, we're supposed to receive them in love. And, 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 and uh, we, we, we can't just pick and choose how we're going to do that. It has to be across the board. We're supposed to be exemplary of our Father. We're supposed to judge like God would judge. And how we do that? We do that through a relationship with him. We have to do what is right in his sight. Some things that are done, we have to you have to deal with them openly. And and, and rebuke so that it won't just perpetuate. Because you'll look look, hey, how you doing? Uh everybody's fine, sister Qu uh, queen, and uh, how's everybody with you? <clears throat> and we'll look at these things and we'll think it's okay when it's not. We have to be advocates for what's right. And that means that when we find ourselves out of line with his word and somebody bring correction, let us receive it in the spirit of meekness. You know, because our objective is to be right. Because any time that you can't be corrected, then you're headed for a big fall. And a lot of times people get into these elevated positions and, and they, be, they feel that they're above reproach. So you can't say nothing to them unless they feel that you're equal to them. But the only thing is, is that you meet the criteria of being a son in the kingdom of God, then you meet that criteria. And you can go to that person in the spirit of love and in meekness and then share with them what you've seen or what the Lord has revealed to you through the situation, whatever, whatever. But when we get to the point where this is, oh, that's the, 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 the head potentate and nobody can say nothing, and he sits up there on his high and mighty throne and feels that he's unapproachable by, uh, quote unquote, his his members, uh, uh, his uh, 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 congregants. Uh, that whole ideology is, is whack. Because when you think like that, you put yourself in a position of, uh, of um, you put the people around you in a position of servitude. When leaders... In the kingdom, are uh, supposed to be in a position of servitude, but we say that they, we, we, our religious rhetoric say that yeah, they are humble servants of God. But if you come to them correct, they'll chop you down like a, uh, 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 break you down like a lawn chair, and think nothing of it, because they feel that they other, but they still say that they, they humble servants. We, we have to, it has to line up with our actions, 
And if we don't see the fruit of what we're saying, then there's a there's there's a a, a, a misform of communication. Let us line up and be in congruent with what's coming out of our mouth, be reflective of what's in our heart. In other words, we're walking out what we're saying. So we're not just doing this because we have to be mindful of one thing, that God is watching. And if God is watching, then we know that he keeps a good record. So we want to make sure that our heart is right. We want to make sure that our mind is right, that we're going to it with the right attitude. We need to take heed to ourselves that we don't allow ourselves to be exalted in our own mind, to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. But we should esteem others rather than ourselves. Let God exalt us. Praise God. Because if he lifts you up, can't nobody take you down. But if you do political moves to get yourself where you want to get and think that that's God, then you, when you do fall, you what? You, everybody will see and know that it wasn't God. But they'll see and know that it was political moves that you made. Let us allow God process to, 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 to emanate from us so that we just trust him and let him work it out. Now, I, I, sometimes people might get selected for certain. That's, that's all right. But let, let us not be political in our thing and our thoughts and the things that we do and say so that we're trying to uh, encourage or entice people to, to get us to this position. I've seen that stuff. I've seen it. And it comes to naught. People, they get what happens is this. Now, that's not to say that God don't have a position for them. But when we, when we disrupt God's process, this is what happens. You get to the destination before your preparation. So you hadn't go through, you hasn't, you haven't gone through the prepared process. God has a process of preparedness. And if you don't go through the process of preparedness and you uh, abort that and you just jump over to what God is showing you and you get there, you're going to find yourself unable to maintain because you didn't do it his way. When you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph had to go through a process. But it was that in that process that prepared him for where God was taking him. He was already a good manager. He saw that in Potiphar's house. But he had to go through a process. And this process was a humbling process. And then he exalted to the second highest position in this, Egypt. My point is that we have to allow God's process to take place. Our patience, the, the trying of your faith, work of patience, and it's the patience, that process... It's more precious to gold in the eyes of God. So when we allow this to, to wit to take place in our life, we give glory to God because we're trusting him. We know that all things work together for our good. So since we know that, because he told us that in his word, when we go through this stuff, we wait with patience. And when we wait with patience, then the, whatever the process that he has predestined for us to go through, to put in us or take out of us whatever is needful for the destination that he has pre-designed for each one of us, then when we go through that process, he gets glory out of it. Because the end result is that we become more like Jesus. We become more like Jesus in the way we think. We become more like uh, Jesus uh, uh, in, 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 in our day-to-day -day operations. Uh, we become more like Yeshua in everything that we say and do. Uh, so, so when we do this, we, we, we bring glory to him because his process is taking place. Now he beginning to see the fruit of it. He began to see the fruit of it being manifested in our life. He began to see this as we go through this refining process. He began to see the fruit of it. And this bring glory to, this bring glory to him. And now he wants to bless you in a way that only he would do it. But you'll see that your mindset changed because you want to be in line with him. So I admonish each and every one of us to just allow God's process to have uh, uh, take place, and, and and we take heed to ourselves, and we we we, we humble ourselves to God, and, and and we don't esteem ourselves higher than we are. Now, this doesn't mean that that we look at ourselves as being nothing, because He has blessed us and taken us out of the kingdom of darkness, and to and brought us into the kingdom of light. Here we were aliens, we were strangers, we were enemies to God. And not only did he bring us in, but then he adopted us and made us sons. So we are humbly grateful. And because he has 
elevated to this highest position that we can have on this planet, being called the son of the most high, the creator of all that exists. Joe Hey, Bob Hey, he that is, was, and shall always be. He has blessed us. And because he's blessed us, we don't want to take for granted the grace and the mercy that he's extended to us by bringing us into his kingdom and making us to become sons through his son, through the shed blood of his son, so that now we who were once enemies have been made sons. So we don't take it for granted. But because we understand who we are and we understand who we are, we walk in the authority of it in the spirit of humility. A lot of times, a strong man shows the greater extent of his strength, not by showing you his strength, but showing you how to restrain himself from showing you his strength. So when we go forth, we don't want to go forth in the might or the ability that we have in and of ourselves, but we want to allow God's spirit to be in the forefront so that whatever comes forth out of us, it'll point back to him and not to us because we don't want to be uh, uh, receiving vain glory, thinking that as we've done something in and of ourselves, when we know that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father, which is above. So we don't want to take that for granted, but we need to take heed to ourselves, and we need to understand who he made us to become, that we walk in the spirit of meekness, but we stand for what's right across the board, that we not allow ourselves to be inundated with the tradition of men, which has rendered God's power ineffective because for the most part we live beneath our privilege in a spiritual sense because we'll stay in a situation that's toxic I'm talking church situation that's toxic and we think that we see that it's not right we know that it's not right but instead of us speaking to it we sit there and embrace it because we figure God's going if don't nobody say nothing and you're on a boat that's going in the wrong direction and everybody know that y'all should have made a left 10 miles back but you sitting there well God had revealed it to you for you to speak it out so somebody need to say something and they need to say it in the spirit of meekness and love but it needs to be said if he showed it to you it needs to be said so we we have to be in that mindset because just because you with somebody that's a leader and if they're not doing it right and you know it's wrong, don't think that God going to give you a, uh, uh, a get out of jail card. You're going to be judged for the right that you know. You're going to be judged for what you know to do right and you don't do it. It will have nothing to do with no leader. Like I taught my kids, when you understand the will of God and if I step outside of the will of God, you have a responsibility to stay in the will of God in spite of me. And if you see that you need to say, hey, dad. This is what the scriptures say, you know, uh, in the spirit of meekness and, and love. You need to do that because we are a brother's keeper. And that don't mean that just because you up here in your mindset, and I say this from a religious perspective, and everybody else is beneath you, that you are unapproachable because you, 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 God is not like that. And then we turn around and say there's no respect to person, that we treat everybody the same. But then our, our actions doesn't dictate that. So we have to say and allow ourselves to, to be in congruent with what the word is saying. So it'll be reflective. Now we, we, we esteem those that are in leadership position and we, we don't disrespect them, but that don't mean that because they're in a leadership position that every move they make is it's checks and balances. Paul, praise God, had to check Peter. He sure did. And and so so I'm saying that, and I'm not saying that to create any type of animosity, but we need to move in the spirit of love because we're supposed to be striving for excellency in the kingdom. That's our objective. Our allegiance is to God's will. Say that again, Gene. Our allegiance is to the will of the Father. Our allegiance is to the will of the Father, not to a system. Our allegiance is to the will of the Father. So that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the way we should be going. And um, sometimes I, I, I don't, I don't always be 
you know, I, I, I'm not against any, when God showed me something, sometimes I'll be trying to figure out how to say it without trying to, um, uh, seemingly create any, uh, tension with folk, but I've learned to just better to just say it in love. I, I'm not trying to out nobody or be disrespectful, but I'm saying that the direction, the trajectory that these churches are going for the most part are going a hundred miles in the direction that God has not said to go because we're not seeing the effectiveness in the lives of the believers. We got saints that's dealing with all type of stuff, world issues. So we, when we allow the spirit of God to have, be preeminent in our lives and God, and we develop in a communication with him, what other system is there to create this, this cohesiveness, this love, this bond of love and peace, if the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, is to reside in us, and yet we're being troubled and tormented with the vicissitudes of life, something is wrong with the connect. Something is wrong with the connect. So we need to go back to the drawing board. That means that the, the power is not flowing through too. Because if it's flowing from him to us, then we should see the effectiveness of it. So when life issues come, then we can pull down that 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 power rod of peace that he's promised us, praise God. So even when life adversities come, it's as if we're selling on a cool sea. And, and but this is a process. This is a process. But God has made it available for us. He's given us peace that surpasses the understanding of the world. When you read about the early day saints and how they were persecuted and they were singing and praying for the people that was persecuting them. No animosity, no love. And here, if somebody don't speak to you, you have an attitude. It's a disconnect. We need to reconnect ourselves, take heed to ourselves, and make sure that we're in alignment with what he's saying in his word. That we have all that he said we need to have to be what he has purposed us to be. And this is important for each and every one of us to strive for daily, daily. This is not something that we should just be doing here and there, but it's a process. It's a continued process. And we have to abide in this call. This is, this is not something that we just go to church to pray. You don't go to church to pray. Listen, we're supposed to be in constant contact with the kingdom that we represent. Constantly. We should be praying and meditating on the precepts. Is we doing our work? You know, it's some should just get a news flash like you need to pray for somebody or 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 God give you a download on the scripture or something. This this is a because we connected and we want to stay connected. This is a process and it's it's and it's available to every one of us that has been. Uh, uh, and graft have been a, a, a born into the kingdom of God. It's, 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 it's available to us, but it's up to us to make the connection. It's up to us, but it's been made available. That's why he's given us his spirit. He, want, he sent his spirit back so that we can have it. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to, to walk in dominion and power and might. We represent him, but he wants us to do it in the spirit of meekness and love and humility. Now, we could be bold as a lion, but as harmless as that, we're not coming in a condescending way trying to cut nobody down. But we come in the spirit, but we speak the truth. We speak the truth in love. You know, Jesus did it. And he was constantly talking to those leaders at that time because they were self-righteous. They felt the system that they had developed, they had tweaked God's system and made their own, uh, you know, uh, turned the system where it was beneficial to them. And, and and so when he was talking and and everything that the, that that um, uh, 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 system or that 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 process that he had mandated from the Father to show them how these are this is when the Messiah is coming, they didn't see it because they they, they was they was inundated with the, 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 the never was in their heart. They had got caught up in the formality of things, and we don't want to we don't want to be guilty of that, you know. Yeah, it's, we, it's good to go to church every chance you get. But don't forget, wherever you go, wherever you go, I'm talking to those who are born into the kingdom, been baptized in Jesus, they filled with the Holy Ghost, evidence speaking according to the scriptures. 
wherever you go, the kingdom is with you. It's nigh with you. So when you standing in that line, church is right there. When you in the shower by yourself, you got church right there. You in the basement fixing something. Or in your garage, uh, uh, tinkering with your car. God is right there, sitting on your porch, barbecuing. We got to take that mindset that we have to go to church. Wherever we go, we bring it with us. We bring it with us. When we go to that building, it's just that. What make that building what it is, is when we come into it. So when we in our car or wherever we at, he said, where two or three gathered, there would I be in the midst. We need to be mindful of that. Now it says, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. We should come together corporately. But never forget that you, the power of God, resides within you. Within you. So you don't have to go to a building to pray. You can pray where you stand and expect the same results. You, If you're doing what he said do, he said you can ask what you will and the Father will do it. So when you lay hands on somebody, you expect God to, to touch them. Because you're abiding in that which he had purposed us to abide in. Because we represent him. So we, we have to change the whole ideology of our thinking. Because he's empowered us to, 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 to go forth as sons and to walk in the abundance of the power. But we need to take heed to ourselves. So that we don't walk around here and not realize who he has made us to become in his son. And with that, I, I'm done. So I'm going to close in a word of prayer. But as I always do, I, about Ezekiel 33, the Lord gave me that uh, March of last year. I think it was March the 9th in a dream. And it was a, it was a clarion call to leaders. Um, and I began to realize it's not just the spiritual leaders, but leaders, everybody in the kingdom of God are kings. So that because we have been called to a call, wherewith we call to to go out into to, to all the world and minister to this world, minister to those who are in the kingdom of darkness and share this truth of God's light, then we need to always be mindful that this is our mandate. But these especially to leaders who have distorted God's word to extract cash from the people of God and he said enough and judgment is coming and I pray that those people who hear this that is doing that that you change I don't even want to see it or hear about it on the news I pray that you change and you that's resolved between you and God but I pray that you change and you do what's right in the sight of God as it pertains to his people because he know our hearts and he's going to judge us accordingly Amen. So you could tell the people everything they want to hear. But God know what you mean when you say what you say. Amen. But it's Ezekiel 33, verses 6 and 7. And the Lord gave me this in a dream. We well, said 33, 6. I saw that. But when I opened my eyes, I heard 7. It says, But if a watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. So this is the watchman who's supposed to be watching. Supposed to be warning the people or the things that are coming. But they're not. They're telling you that about your haters and God got you. They ain't telling you you need to change. They ain't telling you that you can't have that spirit of hatred and, and unforgiveness and God is going to bless it. Hey, <laughs> that's not true, Erica. Um, no, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, because that's not true. Uh, she She's not going to, uh-uh. She, she should have asked him to show her that in the scriptures because he's not able to show her that in the scriptures. Yeah, no, you, 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 you no. Uh -uh. That's what I said. See, religion is saying that we have to, and I'm addressing what I'm reading. 
Um, and by the way, Erica is is my daughter in law. Um, the, the this is the thing that 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 he <laughs> we 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 need to be born into this kingdom, and it's it's a life that we live because you got people go to church and haven't changed at all. They do whatever they want to do, and they think because they go to church they're gonna go to heaven. If if there's been no transformation in the heart. If our heart has not been renewed by his spirit um, and, and we have not been regenerated by his word, then we're not going to make it because we we need to have a transformation of a heart because our heart that we were born with is deceitfully wicked, wicked. And God, he imputes his spirit in us. And once he imputes his spirit in us, then we nurture it. And then we be, we begin to see a transformation in our thinking and how we govern ourselves. And we begin to see our life to begin to mirror Christ. And that's what he wants. He wants us to mirror Christ in our life, in the life that we live, and how we think, how we govern ourselves. That's why he said he came to establish his kingdom. He said the kingdom of, of heaven is at hand. So we, before Jesus, all of us was in the kingdom of darkness. That means that we were void of God. And then what happened, Jesus came and extended or opened the door so that through him we can be accepted into God's kingdom, uh, through in the, in, into the kingdom of God through his son. And once we accepted into that kingdom, we have to be born into it like we was born into this one. Once we're born in this kingdom, then we have to be um, develop and grow. And as we grow and mature, then we begin to see the fruit of that transformation that has taken place once we receive his spirit. It's like God imputing his nature in us through his son. Because we were born with Adam's nature. So we didn't have to learn how to lie, steal, or cheat. It was already in us. And even if you didn't do none of those things, because you are outside, because you were a descendant of Adam, everything that came forth from him was just like him. So when he became contaminated, all he can produce was something that was contaminated. So Jesus had to come into the lineage of man to impute his spirit uh uh, into the lineage of man that we through him could be engrafted into the father so that that nature that was in Christ would be put in us so now we become that we, we're no longer the wild olive branch but now we become engrafted to him and we become that olive branch that has been sent from the father or that vine that has been sent from the father so that's the process once that takes place now church is a part of it because we need to say forsake not to summon ourselves together. We should come together corporately. But he said also we're two or three gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. Because we are a, a, a people that has been governed by his spirit. So once we have his spirit, it, it's what lead us and guide us and direct us. But when we we have to be brought up in the maturity in our teaching. This is a part of that fivefold ministry. And you get that through going to church. Um, but that's not saying that. That's a part of the process, but that doesn't that's that doesn't guarantee salvation. You got some people that um go into church and they 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 do whatever they want to do. I just without getting too explicit, they do whatever they want to do, you know, and they'll do it in the church or out the church in the parking lot. It doesn't matter. They do whatever they want to do. So that is not what what's going to save us. Is that we got to we have to have His Spirit. We really have to have His Spirit. That's what's going to save us. But I'm glad to see y'all. I pray other than that all as well. Yeah, she. We, I would like to sh get a chance to to um, just talk with her if she would listen. I mean, allow me to talk with her and see where she's at as far as that's concerned. But that's the that no, nah, that's not that's it's more to it than that. Yeah. But yeah, but if that's it, Erica, I'm. A, I was saying about um, in Ezekiel 33, six and seven. So, um, that as I said before, that was the clarion call to the leaders. But yeah, that's that's not it. That is, um, yeah. You welcome. I <laughs> love you guys. Um, so I I pray that you know something is said that it's more to it than just going to church because you got a lot of people that go to church that ain't they just go because <laughs> it's a good thing to do. They feel that, you know, they could do their dirt and then go to church and God is going to bless them uh, and going to overlook it. And that's not how it works. <laughs> you know, no, he, <laughs> he don't work like that. He like, oh, well, he go to church every Sunday. He good. No, no. But he just knocked somebody out in the parking lot and 
uh, uh, cheated the uh, elderly lady out some money and all that. No, no, no. Because <laughs> ultimately we're supposed to be reflective of his kingdom. So the character attributes like Christ. One of the underlining things is that we exemplify his love. You know, that we we, we, we couriers of it. That we carry his love um, in, in every facet of our life. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a developmental process. So it's, it starts little and it begins to grow. So, um, but um, this is a part of that process. But it has to take with it. Has to, you have to start. It has to, you know, you got to have it in order to grow. If the seed ain't planted, then you can't get a a, a grapevine. If, if you're not, so that's that's the key. But as I said, I wasn't gonna be long. Praise God, and 45 minutes is gone. Um, so if there's no other questions or something, I'm gonna um, uh, sign off. But if you call me, Erica, then I I can uh, this week I'll get some scriptures and stuff that you could share with her and then we can go from there because people need to really understand what God has, has done for us and how he's called us into this 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 process that he has um, made available through his son so we need to understand it even more excellent alrighty um, with that being said um, brother Will is about ready for bed <laughs> um, and I'm praying that was fed um, <laughs> so I'm going to close in a word of prayer and uh, then I'll sign off gracious father God we come to you we pray that you touch uh, Erica's uh, Lord God we ask that you open up her understanding and put the right people in, in her path Lord God to give her more excellent understanding of your will as it pertains to us in you father we ask that you bless throughout this week watch over each and every one uh, every family represented, Lord. Bless their families, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God, that there be unity amongst them, Lord God. That there be a coming together of your people, Lord, with a oneness of mind, Lord God, endeavoring to to, uh, uh, to, to develop that, that, that spirit of peace among us, Lord God, and unity. Father, we ask that you bless us, Lord, even this holiday season. Watch over and protect, lead God and direct. Bless us that we don't overdo, Lord God. But the only thing that we do in excess is love one another. That the only thing we do in excess is extend our hands towards each other, Lord, in love, Lord. We ask that you bless us and keep us. Lord, watch over us and protect us. Lead God and direct us. Bless us that your will be done. Bless us that your will be done. That we will walk in the, in the fullness of your power and your might. And we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, Lord God, help us to understand who we are in you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. That is so important that we understand who we are in. Um, as I always say in closing, good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good is better and your better is best. Maximizing the potential that is in you. Advancing God's kingdom. One step at a time. Amen. God bless everybody. Good night.